Images are truly binding. This single image of a beach reminds the pleasant sound of the waves and when I simply say sunshine, sandy beach and drink, you would imagine a sandy beach perhaps like this with sunshine and you sitting in it with a drink. It's all simply because human mind not just receives information through audio, video, text or touch, but it also somehow aligns these modalities to build a mental map of all the perceived data. Though there is abundance of data on the web generated by humans, only some are naturally aligned with images or videos. For example, videos on the web naturally have audio in them, with which we can train just an image audio model. But what about other modalities like audio and text? They're not naturally aligned or paired together. So can we come up with a way to bind many modalities together with images? This is exactly what the image mind paper addresses. It shows that the emergence of alignment between modalities called the emergent alignment and the results are quite promising. Without the idea of linking or connecting modalities at scale using web scale data was established in CLIP, which stands for Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training. CLIP takes text prompts and images as input and connects them semantically. It does this at web scale by training on 200 million image text pad dataset called web image text, which were fully gathered from the web without any manual labeling. CLIP introduced contrastive learning, which is to distinguish between positive pairing of image and text versus negative pairing of image and text. The simple switch to contrastive objective made CLIP much more efficient compared to using a predictive objective. The loss used was called the info NCE loss, which maximizes the similarity between the positive pairs and minimizes the similarity between incorrect pairs or the negative pairs. Similar to CLIP's approach to leverage contrastive learning to pairs of modalities, namely image and text, there have also been other works inspired by CLIP that pass other modalities like audio with images, namely audio clip, which pass audio and text. There are also ideas like contrastive multi-view coding, which pass images with depth data. And there are also works like audiovisual instance discrimination with cross-modal agreement, which pass video and audio. The biggest problem, however, with coming up with these individual pairings is that one is not useful for the other. For example, a model pre-trained with image text embeddings is not useful for audio. This exact problem is what is addressed by ImageBind. ImageBind considers several modalities, namely image or video, text, audio, depth, thermal, and IMU, which stands for inertial measurement unit and includes the accelerometer and gyroscope data. The main goal of ImageBind is to learn a single joint embedding space for all modalities and use images as a binding modality. If I stands for images or videos and M stands for any other modality, then we use deep neural networks as encoders to extract embeddings from each of the modalities. Each modality has its own encoder for encoding. More specifically, variations of vision transformers are used for all of the encoders. For images and videos, they use VIT-H 
and for text encoding they use OpenClip. For the audio they use VITB and for thermal and depth they use VITS which is a smaller version of Vision Transformer. During image point training the weights of the image and text encoder architectures are kept frozen and the weights of all other modalities are updated. Because these two models are frozen, they use a pre-trained model for encoding images and texts. This freezing ensures alignment to emerge between other modalities for which we don't have any natural alignment. For example, between audio and depth. Because the inputs are in different forms, they do slight pre-processing before feeding them into deep networks. For example, when dealing with videos, they sample two frames from two seconds of a given video. With audio, they convert two second audio clips into MEL spectrograms. Thermal and depth images are treated as one channel images. When it comes to IMU, it has accelerometer and gyroscope measurements which have X, Y and Z dimensions. They take a 5 second clip of the data and project using 1D convolutions which are fed once again into transformer architecture. The pre-processed inputs are then passed through the encoders whose outputs are then passed through a simple linear layer in order to ensure they are of the same dimension before being trained with a loss called the info NCE loss. Let's say the output of the image or video embedding is Q and the output from any other modality is K. With that, let's look at what's going on inside the info NCE loss function. The info NCE loss function is just a modified cross entropy loss, though it looks a bit scary in the paper. It extends the idea of contrastive learning to multiple modalities. To understand it, I'm going to simplify it by first stripping off the temperature tau, which is trivial, resulting in this simplified equation. During training, we are going to optimize this loss to achieve a minima. The loss is a negative log function and a plot of negative log looks somewhat like this, which indicates that in order to minimize the value of y, we need to achieve higher values of x. This means we need to increase the numerator and decrease the denominator as much as we can. The numerator is nothing but a dot product or similarity of embeddings from image modality Q and any other modality K and it's only for the positive cases as both Q and K have the index I indicating they are positive pairs. The denominator on the other hand is the dot product of embeddings of negative cases. So optimizing this equation brings the embeddings of different modalities for the positive examples closer together and pushes the negative cases far apart. In terms of the embeddings, the loss brings closer the embeddings and creates a joint embedding space to bind together all the modalities K with the image modality Q. This ensures alignment to emerge between modalities from which we don't have any natural alignment and this is what they call the emergent alignment in the paper. This is just a graphic of the image point on Meta's blog indicating the natural alignment with different colors and the emergent alignment with light blue colored lines. Moving on to the results, uh, so before Going into the results, a few words on the training datasets used. They have chosen to use naturally paired datasets like Audioset for video 
and audio and Sun RGBD for depth alignment and Ego4D for IMU and LLVIP for thermal dataset. To demonstrate emergent alignment, they have chosen to show zero shot classification of depth, thermal, audio, and IMU using text prompts. You can notice that these datasets are aligned with images, but the results are shown for text prompts as input. So somehow the alignment between text and other modalities has emerged. Because ImageBind is so novel, there's no real baseline to compare against. They've also shown that they're able to perform audio retrieval and classification without even training or fine tuning with any audio data. What not, this is the only emergent approach and everything else is trained on specific audio data by some means. We also have the ability to do embedding space arithmetic where we provide an input image, say an image of berries, and in the audio, we say chirping birds, and the output generated image seems to be that of birds sitting on berry trees and chirping. Last but not the least, they also show that object detection can be guided with simple audio input by simply replacing the clip embeddings with the image point embeddings, leading to an object detector, which is promptable with audio. It also comes without any further retraining of any of the models. There's also plenty of ablation studies they have included in the paper to show the impact of projection head of the encoder, the training epochs and the data augmentation of the paired images. I'm not going into the details and I encourage you to take a look at the paper, the link for which I've included in the description of this video. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you in my next video. Bye.